Today I want to talk about Tesla again, a company that splits opinions like no other. A little bit like Donald Trump here in the United States. Either you hate the guy or you love the guy, but for so many people out there, the facts don't actually matter, right? And I see the same thing happening for Tesla, uh, both in the retail investment community, in online groups and chat forums, but also uh, with the professional money managers that you see on TV arguing whether Tesla is a tech company or a car company and what the valuation should really be. So the goal of this video today is to look past all of that, uh, look at some hard facts, valuations and see what actually makes sense and what doesn't. We'll talk about Tesla, a little bit about Apple and Zoom. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to the channel. So look, given the trading volumes we had seen in Tesla, it looks like the market really mostly cares about the story that plays around the company and the other tech companies that um, actually make money on the products they sell, right? I did this deep dive about a month ago, uh, looking specifically into the production numbers and the capacity constraints that Tesla has. But the goal of this video today is, is purely looking at the valuation and what actually makes sense, looking at some common sense here. So uh, looking at some of the highlights that we had seen so far this week and as we enter September, right? We had a five for one split that happened on Monday a couple days ago, which obviously brought a lot of volatility to the market. Tesla uh, went up 13%, then on Tuesday down a few percent. Uh, today is Wednesday. We had seen Tesla down as much as 12%. It's down about six or 7%. So we'll see where we end the day. But they also announced uh, the five billion uh, equity issuance uh, uh, at a net the market valuation uh, over the next few months or a couple of years. That's kind of uncertain what the timing is going to look like. But that clearly shows that Tesla is no longer pressured by um, uh, self-funding problems for expansion, uh, in particular as they ramp up around Berlin and Austin. Right. Uh, another fact that some people missed recently was the fact that Tesla's registrations in Europe were down 76% uh, year on year. So against July 2019. And that's uh, partially due to the fact that uh, a lot of the European countries are subsidizing their own car makers for their EV vehicles. Uh, there are now 38 different EV types on the European market versus 28 last year, so there's definitely a lot more competition. And then uh, one last fact that, that a lot of people are looking forward to uh, in two or three weeks is the, uh, the battery day on September 22nd, where the expectation is that Elon Musk uh, is going to announce a lot of improvements in specifically when it comes to the battery density, which uh, is the, the one criteria right, that determines the, uh, uh, the mileage for the cars that uh, Tesla produces. All right, so let's look at some of the valuations here. Uh, let's look at this chart here that shows the uh, Tesla market cap versus the combined market cap of Toyota, Volkswagen, Daimler, BMW, GM and Ford. Uh, they're basically the same now, uh, despite Tesla only really making half a million cars a year. I mean, if you think about uh, the value that this market cap really shows uh, for Tesla, right? Uh, looking at last quarter sales, that basically values each dollar of sales in the second quarter for Tesla at $70 in market cap. That compares to $2.50 for GM, 70 versus 250. If you think about the, the whole market cap for Tesla right now at about $440 billion, uh, that's for a company, again, that's making half a million uh, cars a year versus a GM, which makes over 3 million cars a year and is valued at one tenth of that at about $43 billion. Right, So this, to me, only makes sense if you think that Tesla is basically going to kill every single car company uh, that it compares to, right? that they will basically take over the industry. And maybe they will in 20 years but not in the next three to five years, right? The next thing is looking at the P-E ratio, Tesla basically at this point trades at 1200 uh, price to earnings ratio. That's more than tech companies, right? When you think about, is that a car company? Is that a tech company? Now the tax credits, tax credits is, is something that not many people focused on, but tax credits is uh, really the reason why Tesla was profitable in the second quarter this year. Uh, tax credit is something that Tesla receives for the fact that they are producing uh, EV cars, right? Cars that don't pollute. And they in turn can uh, turn around and sell them to companies like GM that have to buy them because they are producing polluting cars and otherwise they would be fined in states like California. 
So last year, in the last 12 months, uh, Tesla received about 600 million of those tax credits that they then can turn uh, around and sell for profit. But looking specifically at the last quarter that we had, which was the fourth profitable quarter in a row, which uh, allows Tesla to be included in the S&P 500, which is again a big deal for uh, for the bulls on Tesla. They sold uh, 428 million of those uh, uh, tax credits, which uh, allowed them to be profitable, and, and they showed a profit of 104 million in that quarter. So again, the cars they actually produce um, are losing money, right? Uh, they only made money because of those tax credits, and so if you remove them. Um, Tesla's uh, gross margin effectively would go down from about 5%, which is on par with all the other car makers, to about 1%. And in fact, if you listen to Elon Musk on the last uh, investors call, he tells you that um, he'd be happy in the future to be at around 1% to 2% net margins, right? So again, does this compare to the tech companies? Is this the same margin that tech companies are trading at and, and selling their products at? Um, uh, it's not right. In fact, uh, talking about uh, tech companies, look at this um, this chart. I promised that we would talk about Apple and Zoom in this video as well. Uh, this is an interesting chart that I just saw. Um, Apple is the largest company in the S&P 500 now, right? And by the way, in the world. Um, and so, in the last two months, they added uh, Apple added the the market cap of the eighth and ninth largest companies in the S&P 500. They added the the market cap of Johnson and Johnson in July. And then they added the market cap of Walmart in August. So again, uh, Apple took 30 years to uh, become a $1 trillion company in terms of market cap. They took two years to move from $1 trillion to $2 trillion, right? And again, that's a company that, uh, again, talking about the valuations, uh, actually is very profitable, unlike uh, Tesla. But they uh, make 82% of their uh, money from a product set that is uh, Five years old, right? The last product for Apple was the Apple Watch in 2015, and and the bulk of uh, the money that um, Apple makes is from a product from iPhone, which is more than a decade old. And arguably, 5G is going to be another source of a huge profitability for them uh, for the years to come. But but again, when we think about valuations and what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, that's a question, right, to ask. And finally, let's move on to Zoom. Again, look at this chart here. Um, Zoom, uh, nine months ago, was the uh, 300th uh, biggest company in the US. Uh, today, they are the top 50 company in the US. Now, this chart compares Zoom to Cisco. Uh, as you know, uh, the founder and CEO of Zoom is a former Cisco engineer, right? That left to create his own company because he wasn't able to get his project off, um, uh, off the ground at Cisco. And so he started Zoom. And uh, today, Zoom is valued at 75% of what Cisco is valued at. But they only generate 5% of uh, the revenues that Cisco generates, right? That's the flat line down here. Uh, they make 5% they make of what Cisco makes, but they are valued at 75% of what uh, Cisco is valued. Again, the momentum's obviously with Zoom and uh, COVID-19 allowed them to um, uh, gain a huge amount of market share to accelerate uh, the development and, and uh, gain new clients, right? Because we're all obviously on Zoom uh, all day long, uh, whether it's at work or at schools, etc. But but again, the valuations, uh, you kind of have to think about uh, in the next six to 12 months as there is a vaccine, people will go back to the offices, maybe uh, uh, stop using Zoom as much. Is that valuation justified here? I love Tesla. Uh, Apple and Zoom, just for disclosure, uh, I'm just saying uh, when we look at the valuations, where is the common sense here? And so back to our Tesla story, you know, does it actually make sense to be trading on these valuations here? I think a lot of the news that uh, the market has uh, digested is already in the price here. And we see that volatility that you see kind of uh, towards uh, top market tops, right? Uh, that, that drop we had seen over the last two days uh, post the split uh, run up um, is, is kind of a uh, the really uh, push and pull of the market of trying to decide uh, where the next correction is going to be in the stock. The last piece of the puzzle really is the battery day in uh, two or three weeks where a lot of expectations already priced in the stock. But you have to believe at some point there is going to be some consolidation of that huge run up, right? That gap usually uh, gets closed uh, from a trading perspective. My personal call is I think the stock is going to correct. We'll settle somewhere between uh, 1200 and 1700 on the pre-split levels which is uh, between 240 and 340 on the on the new price, uh, the post split price. 
Uh, but if you were lucky enough to be invested in Tesla over the last uh, couple of months or even a couple of weeks uh, and enjoy that uh, run up, uh, which was spectacular, you know, you owe it to yourself to take some money off the table or buy some downside protection. I personally own uh, options for the downside in Tesla. I think we're going to see a correction. I think there's a lot of uncertainty that's uh, being ignored by the market as we run to the elections in the United States here. And um, I think that correction is, is about to happen uh, pretty soon. So hopefully you enjoyed this conversation uh, on Tesla's valuation. Uh, consider uh, liking this video, subscribing to the channel for more updates, and I will see you in a few days.